Hi there, my name is Scott Phillips. I'm the president and founder of Starfish Medical. Today we'll be talking about human factors, industrial design, and user interface development. They're all sort of uh, paired elements in the early stage of development. In my experience, that usability drives adoption more so than the technology. And as an engineering physicist, it always makes me a little sad to realize that, but at the same time, it's very powerful to understand that as engineers, we only have part of the story. One of the products we've worked on in the past is for a smoke evacuation during surgical procedures. Um, Bovi plumes are given off and those plumes are toxic to both the patient and the user, in this case the surgeon. We were able to design develop a very effective smoke evacuator but also incorporate the ability to be able to pull liquids from that field so the surgeon is able to clean up as they go. Within that industry of smoke evacuator devices, this ability now to be able to pull fluids and make the device far more usable for the surgeon has created a complete paradigm shift within that industry. So in school, um, we learn to design for consumer devices 100% of the time. Um, but now that I work at Starfish Medical, it's a little bit different. So in consumer UX design, uh, it focuses a lot on designing something new and innovative, and its focus is to in increase user adoption and retention. Whereas in medical UX design, its main goal is usability. It focuses more on the functionality of the device and de-risking potential usability errors. Usability testing is uh, about observing intended users and the device and system that they use. Uh, can they use it safely? What are the artifacts like cabling that get in the way of the precision task? What are the environmental influences that affect the task? So some of the lessons that we've learned is in a simulated environment, we not only focus on the end effector, we're focusing on the supporting surgical team, what's in that environment, and one of the tricks that I do is when you're videotaping for these observations is to go ahead and focus on the end effector but also take a video camera and, ca and capture the room environment. What is else is going on in that room environment that will affect that device and the safety of that device. So they needed this special tool to do this, this surgery. It was, a, it was a neurosurgery tool and um, she brought the tool in, tried to set it up, but there was something wrong with it. It just wasn't working correctly. And upon looking at the tool, it seems relatively simple. It's not like a, a complicated computer or anything like that. In fact, it doesn't even have a computer on it. It's just got a few buttons and so on. Um, but the surgeon was saying, you know, it's not set up right. It's not working. And so she was trying to play with it. There was this card to give her some information. and. Just, just couldn't figure it out and, and the, the surgeon increasingly was yelling and saying, hey, can you just get somebody in here that knows what they're doing, basically. And so at that point, I sort of just saw it on her face, everything just sort of shut down. And, and it was just one of those situations where they just, you know, she hit the, the gas instead of the brake and just could not go beyond. They could have had the best instructions on the planet in front of her, wouldn't have mattered. The lights were turned down, couldn't see that well, high stress situation basic cognitive function. So, and the, the, the outtake from that is when the designers were designing this device, they themselves weren't in a life-threatening situation, just couldn't be. And uh, it's, you know, the, generally when we do tests and stuff like that, we wouldn't have done it in the dark, trying to make this, uh, the, this card in the dark so the text is super small. And what is the information you actually need? We always love to feature load. We don't really try to extract the critical use functions. Uh, which in this case would have been quite beneficial to the operator. We did a uh, summative testing of this medical device where, where patients would be trained by a doctor and then they would be given the device and uh, IFU, which is instructions for use, to take home and do it by themselves the following day. So in our test, um, we gave our subjects on orientation. The following day, we gave them the IFU and asked them to do the use the device by themselves. And we found out that some of the information was lost and they missed the step. So we had to go back and tweak the IFU a little bit so that uh, the users would carry out the steps correctly.
sometimes the technology is not enough. Uh, we had a customer come to us recently where the technology worked great, but the industrial design, human factors, and usability of it was an absolute failure. Patients couldn't wear it, they had to wear it for over an hour, and they couldn't wear it for more than five or 10 minutes. We did some great usability, some great case studies, uh, some formative evaluations, very quick stuff to begin with, and then got more involved. And at the end of it, came up with a great, very comfortable for the patients. Uh, usability was uh, great and the product worked fantastic. Um, regulation, I would say, doesn't really restrict creativity, but it does make timing more important. And um, so what you'll find is that um, regulation really kind of doesn't put any restrictions on creativity uh, near the beginning of the process. But as you go down the process, it, it kind of starts to put up barriers. Um, and we had a client that wanted to make an aesthetic change uh, pretty late in the, de the design process. And what that meant is that they had to redo a lot of their um, compliance testing, their risk analysis. Um, and you can compare this to being able to test a lot of this kind of stuff up front um, using uh, pretty low cost, low fidelity prototypes um, before you even have to deal with uh, you know, uh, any kind of CAD, part numbers, or, or version control. Two examples I'd like to share with you. The one on the left has a prototype that we did out of just a regular foam core. And we went ahead and tested with users, made some changes quickly, implemented into the next one on the right. You can see some quick changes that were made, so we tested that the next day. And that way we've been able to shorten the time frame. We don't have to redo a lot of uh, 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 features. We can just go ahead and, and focus on just the main safety features that we're concerned about in testing. You'll find that if you leave industrial design to the very end of the process, it tends to show through. And um, uh, not only could your usability of, the, of your product suffer, but so could its perceived value and uh, your ability to really differentiate your product in the marketplace. I spent some time in an ICU once uh, the, the, so they had all these infusion pumps. This patient was very sick, so they had a lot of infusion pumps. They were getting them ready to do uh, a trip to go to the MRI machine. The patient needed it quite badly, but uh, it was a life-threatening situation. So of course, you have these pumps are portable. They just unplug them, away you go. You just carry the pumps with you. Uh, but as immediately upon unplugging one of the pumps, it started beeping right away. Oh, the battery's dead. How can that be? They just, it, it should have been charged. It had been charging all day kind of thing. And so they said, oh, it just does that. It's just one of those things. Oh, it just does that. It, and they just kind of shrug it off, right? Oh, it just does that. It's okay. We'll, we'll just, we'll swap it out, take an extra 20 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever to do it. And it's, it, it is pretty interesting how in the med industry, how much it just does that, that I hear. And, uh, and it often makes you feel that, you know, that's the important stuff. I don't want anybody to say when I'm designing something or have finished designing something, it's in production. I don't want them to say, oh, it just does that. Don't worry about it. You know, because we should. Everything matters when it comes to uh, those kinds of high stakes situations.